probably going to be a one-term president if he's elected. Do you agree with that? I, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, Bill Clinton is a can-do person. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of talk tonight about strategy and how did we make this happen and what strategic decisions were made when. Uh, if Bill Clinton wins tonight, uh, it's because he has been one extraordinary candidate and I believe is going to be a great president. He has a real vision for the future. Uh, that's what this administration has been lacking. Uh, the American people don't uh, expect every solution to work, but they do expect the president to try some things uh, to get our country back on track again. Bill Clinton is going to be putting forth an agenda for the future, which is going to say we've got to try some things. We've got to make some tough decisions. Uh, we've got to focus on what is best in America. I think that's the kind of leadership we're going to see. Ron Brown, let's, please, let's keep the camera on, Ron Brown. Folks, if you're out there saying, why is this man smiling? I will tell you why he's smiling. The Democrats have carried Georgia, which Ron Brown and every other Democrat was uh, worried. They were having 3,000 calorie attacks over whether or not they could carry Georgia. They carried it. That's one reason he's smiling. The other, of course, is that they're out to an early lead in the Electoral College. Chairman Brown, thank you for being with us. May but talk Dan, to you later. But Dan, you. could I just add, I want sure. to reinforce your message, and that is that uh, there are still millions of Americans who have not yet voted. They They've got to get out and participate in our democratic process. A decision hasn't been made in many states around the country, and we all as citizens have an obligation to get out there and vote. Thank you, Ron Brown. And one of the reasons you want to get out there and vote is there are a lot of Senate races just hotter than a hickory fire at this hour. Uh, some of them will be decided by the votes that come in the last few hours, and the polls are open in a lot of states. Bob Schieffer, why are so many incumbents in trouble in the Senate? It's obvious that in a lot of these races, uh, you know, Sanford in North Carolina, Glenn in Ohio, some rather entrenched incumbents are having the fights of their lives. Well, these are two of the hottest races, the one you just mentioned, the one in uh, North Carolina, where Terry Sanford, a 75-year-old uh, senator, is seeking a second term, and he's in a real fight with Locke Faircloth, a 64-year-old uh, businessman. Uh, that race at this point is so close that we, we can't make any characterization of how it is going. Uh, much the same story in Ohio, where John Glenn, the astronaut, uh, is uh, locked in a real battle with uh, Mike DeWine, the uh, lieutenant governor out there. One of the things at the beginning of this uh, kind of election cycle people wondered about, Dan, is would a vote against the Persian Gulf War hurt or help these senators? Both of these senators voted against going to war in the Persian Gulf. We looked at that tonight. Terry Sanford, 23 percent of the people uh, said that uh, that war vote was important. The people who thought that was important, only 23 percent uh, voted for Terry Sanford tonight. John Glenn did a little bit better, but he got only 40 percent of the people who thought that, that that vote was important. Neither of these races have been decided, but you can see that is a factor in these races. I want to ask you, uh, in a state like North Carolina, which is a ding-dong battle between Bill Clinton mm -hmm. uh, and President Bush, the polls have closed in North Carolina, it's very close. Uh, could a Clinton victory in North Carolina possibly be, be enough by a wide enough margin to pull Sanford through? Or is the thinking that even if Clinton carries North Carolina, he hasn't done that, that it wouldn't be by a wide enough margin to help Sanford? I think for him to have any coattails in a state like North Carolina, he'd have to win by a pretty good sized margin because this is a very hot fight that has a lot of other factors uh, that enter into it besides just this. John Glenn, though, has pulled in. We can say that he is leading in Ohio, but I stress we haven't called that race yet. Thanks very much, Bob Schieffer. Florida, Kentucky, Virginia, Ohio, and North Carolina now become practically five must-win states for George Bush. The polls have closed in all five of those states, but we don't have enough information on which to make a call. With 270 electoral votes needed to win, our estimate is that Bill Clinton now has 25. That includes his most recent win in West Virginia. George Bush has 12, having carried Indiana. Connie Chung is covering the 12 gubernatorial races this year. Connie, any results so far in those governor's races? Yes, we do. The polls have co closed in five of those states. We have four winners. They're all Democrats. Let's take a look at these boards. In Indiana, home of Dan and Marilyn Quayle, Governor Evan Bayh is the big winner. He's the nation's youngest governor, only 36 years old, beating Lindley Pearson, who is the state attorney general. In Vermont, Democratic Governor Howard Dean is the incumbent. He's the nation's only governor who is also a physician. He's the big winner tonight. In North Carolina, former Governor Jim Hunt is the winner. He'll be returned to the State House. He went home to the farm for a few years and came right back. There you see it right there. In West Virginia, the Democratic winner is Gaston Caperton. He's the incumbent, beating Cleve Benedict, who is a former congressman. Incidentally, Dan, Gaston Caperton 
1988, when he first ran for governor, promised that he wouldn't raise taxes and then turned around right after the inauguration and raised taxes twice. His popularity dipped to 14 percent and he worked it all the way back up and he won tonight. Let's see if President Bush can do the same. All right, Connie Chung. I want to remind you uh, that the, the big core vote, the largest collection of electoral votes in the nation, 54 electoral votes, is in California. And the western, west coast tier, Washington state, Oregon, California, that tier of states is going to be a long time before we know how they voted. It's another reason to stay tuned. It's also a reason for me to remind you that there are races below the top of the ticket to be decided in all of these states, two big Senate races in California alone. We right now have our focus on Florida, Kentucky, Virginia, Ohio, and North Carolina. Polls close in those states. When and if we get results in those states, you're going to know more about how this election is going to go. In the early going, it's inescapable. Bill Clinton is off to a very good early start. Why do we say that? Well, first of all, he's carried two states in the upper northeast that normally go uh, Republican. That would be New Hampshire and Vermont. Also, and perhaps more importantly, he has cracked into what used to be the Republican solid south by carrying uh, Georgia. Uh, Senator Sam Nunn, Representative John Lewis, Governor Zell Miller, the Democrats got busy, pulled that through for Clinton, Gore, and Georgia, and that gives them a crack in the solid south, makes it all the more important that President Bush and Dan Quayle carry Florida, where the polls have been closed for some time now and we don't have a decision, and carry Texas, where the polls are not, not yet closed. Mike Wallace has been talking to people to find out why they pick the candidates they do. Mike, why do they? In the presidential race, why did you vote for the man that you voted for today? Was it issues? Was it party? character, personality. Every four years we hear a lot of high-minded talk about why people vote, how we make up our minds. But I'm not so sure that we always tell the truth. So we thought that we would talk to a variety of Americans that you all know about why they cast their votes the way they do. Don't tell us who you're going to vote for, we said. Tell us why. Why are you going to vote for that person? See if you identify with any or all of, about, of what you're about to hear. Every time I try and define it, it's, it's, it's so simple to me. I mean, I clearly understand in here, in my heart, what I'm looking for. And that's why I say character and competence in that order. Every time I go into the polling booth, I imagine um, my ancestors, my mother and father and my grandparents, and all my aunts and uncles kind of hovering around um, just to make sure that I don't do anything more than punch the straight Democratic ticket. I see too many plastic personalities with these bottled phrases, these canned words. You know that they've said them dozens of times and I get a feeling of emptiness. I want somebody that's real. I look for somebody who is going to inspire me to help. I want somebody to tell me that they are not going to become like every like what we've had up until now. I would want to be able to look someone in the eye and say, I'm proud this guy's my president or this lady is my president. I'm more apt to vote for a candidate because of what I perceive to be his character and personality than I am because of anything he says he's going to do. I like that guy's instincts. My feeling is that under pressure, he would not only be graceful, he'd be smart as hell. He would fight for America. As we put that piece together, I canvassed my own feelings, Dan. I'm an independent, so party is not important to me. Issues? a split for me. I'm with them on some, against them on others. So why did I vote for the way I did? Mostly, I want to be proud of the man that I vote for. That's why way back I voted for Dwight Eisenhower, while after that I voted for Jack Kennedy. This year, I voted for conviction, for intellect, for capacity. Pride, perhaps, will come later. Also, Dan, we asked today voters what qualities were most important to them in deciding who they were going to vote for. Here are the results. Most of them, 37% of them, said they voted for change. And six of the ten voters who voted for change voted for Bill Clinton. Next, best plan. Whatever that means, best plan. Finally, only 18% said that experience was the most important reason to vote for the man they voted for today. Interesting stuff, Mike Wallace. 25 electoral votes for Bill Clinton, 12 for President Bush. Coming up now, basically what may turn out to be the hour of decision. So stay here with us. Our CBS News coverage will continue after these messages.